let us pray our gracious heavenly father we thank you for this wonderful day we thank you for this holy hour that you have ordained us to devote upon your scriptures help us to realize that we are a kingdom of priests and a holy nation unto you we ask this in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ kindly be seated during one of my previous stationing in an urban church which was sandwiched in between a bus terminus and a marketplace i engaged a retired missionary a diocesan retired missionary to pray for the people who flow in and out of the church all through the day with various needs and expectations sometimes when i am busily engaged with my office work or when i am engaged in an intense conversation with someone this diocesan missionary will sneak in with a glass of water requesting me to pray over it he will also pray over it and administer to the ailing person who had come for prayer this elder missionary is known for his healing prowess but he never wanted to leave me out he always wanted to include me in his mission as a diocesan missionary who has dedicated his whole life for the mission of the diocese for him the pastor is always the source and inspiration for any ministry the sermon theme for this sunday is ordained ministry in the church this was left out a couple of weeks before but i am serving a csa church which was nurtured as a wesleyan methodist congregation and this church still has strong elements of methodism built into the liturgical and ministerial aspects of its life so what is the methodist view on ordained ministry you will be curious to know that john wesley the father of methodism never believed that laying on of hands by a bishop confers any special ecclesial status for the person who is ordained he never believed that however when methodism went to america and when the church of england refused to ordain any methodist rebels john wesley was compelled to ordain a couple of ministers to serve sacraments to the american methodist congregations john wesley died in 1791 and the very next year the methodist conference said no more ordination no one shall wear the clerical vestments like cassock surplice or stole no one should be addressed as reverend a total ban on the clerical office in methodist church then how come i see an uninterrupted line of ministers in the ministerial role board in our counting room we need to understand the changing perception on ordination and its implications for the church as a whole the early church believed that only the 12 apostles of lord jesus christ were authorized to continue the ministry of the kingdom of god because only they were called by our lord jesus christ and only they were commissioned before our lord's ascension as we read in the final chapters of uh, all the gospels and also in acts chapter 
and on the day of Pentecost, even though the Holy Spirit was poured upon more people, only the twelve apostles assumed the authority of ministry and oversight over the early congregations. Nevertheless, when the apostles wanted to share their ministerial burden and wanted to set aside some ministers for diverse ministries and also for Gentile mission, they practiced laying on of hands to commission some people for these special ministries as we find in Acts chapter 6 verse 6 when deacons were set aside to look after the vid Greek widows. Acts chapter 13 verse 3 when Paul and Barnabas were set aside with the laying on of hands for Gentile mission. And as Paul remains Timothy in 1st Timothy chapter 4 verse 14. In the second and third centuries when wave after wave of Roman persecution came and hit the church, it was the ordained minister who was the first target for arrest, torture, and death. Nevertheless, these ordained ministers ensured that the truth that they received from the apostles were passed on, and the next generations were nurtured in apostolic faith. Through the torturous martyrdom of the ordained ministers, the early believers learned that this is a faith worth dying for. Through the torturous martyrdom of the ordained ministers, the early believers learned that this is a faith worth dying for. Emperor Constantine patronized Christianity during the 4th century. Christian kingdom emerged and gradually ordained ministers began to share the imperial authority. As the Christian, uh, Christian kingdoms cropped up here and there in uh, Europe. And the medieval Roman Catholic Church is the fullest expression of this imperially authoritative church. When England rebelled against the Pope, Roman Pope, they only removed the Pope, but they kept the Catholic hierarchy in the Church of England, the Anglican Church. At the same time, Martin Luther was brewing rebellion against the Roman Catholic Church in Germany and the Reformation fire was catching up in many places in the Christian empires. One of the main contributions that the Reformation theology had done is to hold the ministry of ordination in a creative tension with the calling and commissioning of the whole people of God. Citing biblical texts like Exodus 19, 6, where God calls the Hebrew slaves as the kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And 1 Peter 2, 9, where Peter calls the saints in the early church as the royal priests. The Reformation theologians emphasized upon the priesthood of all the believers. The whole congregation of the Baptist is a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Then why ordained one person to set him apart? This question has to be answered correctly if we seek to encourage the church to exercise its royal priesthood. I told you about the official stand taken by the Methodists in the 19, 18th century, proscribing ordination and clerical office. During the 20th century, due to ecumenical encounters and also mellowed down by the ongoing 
Anglican Methodist unity dialogue and also due to the needs of the ever expanding missionary Methodist missionary fields all over the world the Methodists accepted that ordained ministry is an indispensable element in the ministry of the church however they clarified who an ordained minister is the Methodist ordained minister and I quote holds no priesthood differing from that which is common to Lord's people a Methodist minister holds no priesthood that is different uh, which is common which is different from that which is common to the whole Lord's people that is in ordination when you set a person apart to be ordained the principal representative selection is operative that is that one person receives ordination as a representative of the corporate priesthood as a representative of the corporate priesthood of the whole people of God Bishop Deva Sahayam the proponent of laity theology and the founder of the late Institute for Theological Education light has often said that a pastor is a trainer a congregation is a team a church is a training camp that society is an arena where the congregation plays during the weekdays with the world watching a pastor is a trainer a congregation is a team the church is a training camp the society is the arena where the congregation plays during the weekdays with the world watching in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 Saint Paul begs the Ephesian church to live worthy of the calling to which they have been called listing various offices in the church Saint Paul tells them in verse 11 that these officers these offices were created to equip the saints for the work of the ministry as we find in verse 12 of Ephesians 4 all these offices including the ordained ministry is created to equip the saints for the work of the ministry the concept of equipping lay people has strong resonance in the Methodist understanding of ordained ministry within the whole church your person is ordained to equip the saints for the, the work of ministry sometime the church is wrongly understood as the arena of play we have mushrooming churches coming up with pastors playing a lot of antics throwing lights upon themselves the Christian crowd simply sits back to be entertained an ordained minister is not an entertainer an ordained person is set apart so that the whole people of God the congregation will be inspired to get into the act of being a priestly people in the society at large the ordained person is set apart so that the whole people of God will be inspired to get into the act of being a priestly people in the society and in their neighborhood when God called the Hebrew slaves as the kingdom of priests and the holy nation he was calling them to be the representative of God's holiness God's righteousness and God's love in the land that they're going to live among the many peoples among whom they were called to live a person is ordained to inspire the whole congregation for the corporate priesthood a person is ordained to equip the saints for the work of the ministry may the ordained minister always remi remind the congregation about the life of priesthood for which we are called through Christ 
to live as perfect witnesses of Christian holiness, Christian love, Christian compassion, and Christian peace in the society, wherever we walk, wherever we study, and wherever we live. May God help us all through this month with His grace and with the power of the Holy Spirit that we shall live expressing God's love and the kindness of Jesus Christ and being ambassadors of Christ's peace. May God help us to live as a holy nation.